Hey, Poplar Springs. Good evening. I'm so thankful for you joining us tonight for our Wednesday evening uh, time of devotion. And I'm glad I can come to you tonight. Thankful to be feeling better. And I appreciate all the prayers and the calls and the texts that you've sent my way in these days that we've uh, been fighting against COVID. Uh, thankfully, it was a mild case and uh, symptoms really weren't too severe. Uh, but the Lord was good to us and gracious and uh, we're feeling much, much better. And uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow we're breaking out of isolation. But I do appreciate all of your prayers and uh, all of your thoughts. Uh, I'm glad to, to, to be able to come to you tonight and just take a moment to spend with you in prayer and uh, a short time in God's Word together. Uh, as we begin our time tonight, we want to always remember those in our prayer guide, and that guide went out today to our church family. So I hope that you'll take some time to look over that and uh, pray for the names and the needs that are on that list. I've got a copy of it here, and of course, that would include all of those who have physical needs. I want to be mindful of praying for those, those who are fighting against cancer. Uh, obviously, there are a lot that are fighting against the COVID virus right now as well. And we want to be mindful and praying for them and for the treatments that many of them are receiving. Uh, also continue to pray for Ray Hill and Cassie Clark, Larry Metz, uh, Wilma Holland as she's in hospice care, uh, Dustin Murphy, Louise Hutchinson, Anita Whitaker, uh, Kathy Brody, uh, Keith and Lynn Sullivan, uh, Ryan Luttrell, Chris Leonard, uh, Jackie Marr, Gabriel Land, uh, and Amanda Black uh, are some of the names that are on the list. And so we're praying for these individuals and the uh, different needs that they have and just asking the Lord to, to work in this situation uh, that they're walking through and pray that his glory will be seen and also pray for their healing, uh, that the Lord would bring that about. We're also praying for uh, God's comfort and mercies to be with the family of Barbara Hames. Miss Barbara was one of our own here at Poplar Springs, such a sweet and such a fun lady. And uh, she's now in the presence of King Jesus. And so we're praying uh, for Jan Bowen, her daughter, along with Debbie Hames, her daughter, and the extended family as well. Just asking that God would give comfort and grace to them during these days. So let's remember them also. Uh, continue to pray for our homebound, our nursing home, and assisted living members. Uh, pray for our church. A lot of prayer prompts there to guide you and pray for uh, the church during the season. And let me just take a moment right here to say thank you to Poplar Springs uh, for the way that you you showed up and showed out for Light Up the Lot that we put on the last two weekends. Uh, man, it was such an amazing event. Uh, great outreach to our community. We had, uh, I mean, over a thousand plus vehicles, uh, easily over a thousand plus vehicles on the campus. And uh, we were able to just reach them to give them a moment of uh, joy and ultimately to tell them what Christmas is all about, the coming of Christ. So thank you, Poplar Springs, uh, for making that possible. Uh, pray for our community, our country, uh, our leaders, our uh, national leaders, local leaders. Pray for all of them. Uh, remember our school teachers and students as they've come to, uh, to a winter break, a Christmas break now. I uh, pray the Lord will just uh, give them some good days of rest as they've got a, a break from much of the stress that they've been under this year. Also remember our first responders, our military personnel. Uh, we want to pray for all of them and ask the Lord to uh, uh, to be with them. For missions this week, we're praying uh, for the people group, the Azirs in Azerbaijan. And uh, as I was watching the service Sunday, we got to the mission focus and I heard Joseph share uh, this particular people group and their location uh, a smile came to my face because this is actually a country uh, that Poplar Springs has a connection with. Some of you will remember uh, a young lady named uh, formerly Miss Ellie Clark. Uh, she's part of our faith family. She was an exchange student who lived in the home of Gerald and Kathy Clark. Uh, she's now since married and uh, has moved, uh, moved out of state with her husband who serves in the military. Uh, but uh, Ellie hails from the country of Azerbaijan. And uh, I was just excited to hear the name of that country again and to know of our connection there. And I'll never forget probably seven, uh, almost eight years ago now on a Sunday morning for our mission focus as we were praying through the nations. Uh, we came to the country of Azerbaijan and uh, just happened to be that Sunday. And uh, I asked Ellie as she came to church that Sunday if she would love to pray for her own country. And uh, she just leapt at the opportunity, jumped at it. And uh, I'll never forget her praying that Sunday morning for her own people uh, the passion and the love that she had for them and praying that they would come to know Christ. And so uh, as we pray for the Azirs and Azerbaijan, uh, let's pray that the Lord will open their eyes and open their hearts to uh, to see and to believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Uh, continue to pray for our other mission partners as well. Paul and Pregnancy Services uh, here locally, our church planning partners, the Valhalla Family, New City Church in New York, Emmanuel Community Church there in New Orleans also. Praying for these as they serve those communities that they're in and pray the Lord will use them in a great, great way. And then always we're praying for the lost, 
Obviously, there's names that are there on our prayer guide each week. We're praying for their salvation. Uh, but we also all know individuals, uh, uh, whether family members or co-workers or people in our neighborhoods uh, who need the Lord. And so we want to be mindful to, to pray the Lord to always help us to be faithful witnesses, uh, to be bold witnesses, that we would uh, share our faith uh, in Jesus Christ with others. So we'll pray for that as well. I'm going to take a moment and uh, just lead us in a, a time of prayer. We'll kind of pray through this God. Uh, loosely, and I uh, would just encourage you wherever you may be watching this evening, join me in that time of prayer. Lift up your voice with me, and uh, let's go to the Lord together right now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this day that you have given us and for all of your blessings and your goodness to us. Lord, we're thankful for your love and for your mercy, God, that you have saved us according to your grace. And Father, as we come before you tonight, Lord, we're so thankful that we can call you our Father and that you're in heaven. And uh, Lord, there's nothing that's too hard for you. And as we call upon you tonight, Lord, we, we pray for these needs. We lift up these names that are before us on this prayer guide. And Lord, no doubt the many other uh, needs and, and burdens that we are carrying tonight, Lord, we bring them to you. And uh, we submit them to your perfect plan. God, we pray that uh, as we pray about these things tonight, Lord, that you would conform our wills to your perfect will. And God, we pray that your glory would be seen and not only seen, but that it would be delighted in. And Father, we pray tonight, Lord, for the physical needs, God, that have been mentioned. There are so many, so diverse, uh, but Lord, we do pray for healing. We pray whether that comes through medicine or medical procedures, God, that you would bring that to, to be. Father, we pray, Lord, for those who are fighting against this virus. I know there are many who are in hospitals tonight, uh, many who are at home fighting against it. God, we just pray that you would give them strength. We pray for their bodies to recover. Uh, we pray for their healing. God, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, just be with their family members as well and and God, keep them safe. And Lord, we, we do thank you uh, that uh, vaccines are going out. We do thank you for uh, this opportunity that is before us to uh, to be able to have an impact in, in slowing the spread of this virus. And Father, we, we thank you for those who have worked on that. And Lord, we do pray now that it would uh, be an effective means and uh, measure that could uh, prohibit the spread of this virus and limit those who are, are feeling its effects. Father, we pray uh, tonight, Lord, for the families that have lost loved ones. God, we ask that you would give comfort to them, Lord, that you would be with them in this season of loss that they're experiencing. And uh, Lord, as we think about Miss Barbara Haynes, we're so thankful to know that she is now in the presence of King Jesus. And uh, we thank you for the great hope that we have of being able to, uh, to be with him as well and also to be with her again. And so, Father, we pray that that truth, that reality, that it would bring comfort and hope to the family tonight. Father, we pray tonight, Lord, for our homebound and our assisted living members, God, and, and not just those that are our members, but Lord, I know there are many, uh, many who have family members, God, there, there are many individuals living in these places, and because of all that's happening this year, uh, they're, they're just in continual isolation. And so, Father, we pray for them, God, we pray, God, that you would just comfort them, and God, that they would be, uh, God, that they would find joy, uh, not necessarily in their circumstances, but they would find joy uh, in Jesus and knowing that he is with them, never leaving them nor forsaking them. So God, we ask that you would watch over them and God, keep them safe. We pray for their caregivers. We pray for their family members as well. We know it's a difficult time for them. God, we just ask that you would strengthen all of them. And Father, tonight we do pray for our church. We thank you for our faith family. God, I thank you for your goodness to us this year, Lord, even in this different year and sometimes a difficult year. <clears throat> Father, we're, we're thankful uh, Lord, that you have uh, been so good to us, and God, your grace has been given to us. And Lord, help us to continue to shine the light of Christ. Help us to glorify you. Help us to be a people who are passionate about you and your glory and everything that we do. And Father, we pray tonight for our leaders. We pray for our country tonight. God, we pray, Lord, for our president and his cabinet. We pray for uh, the president-elect, and, and Lord, as it appears that uh, Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States, we pray for that transition, we pray for him as he takes office. God, we pray for him because you've commanded us to, and we pray for him that we may uh, live peaceful and quiet lives. And so, Lord, would you be in the midst of all that's taking place? And uh, Father, would you uh, would you be in this transition? And God, would you uh, would you guide, Lord, this president, his cabinet, his policies, uh, Lord, that would uh, lead us in ways that would be right and for the well-being of all people, that would preserve liberties and justice. And uh, Father, Lord, we pray for our nation tonight. We pray for healing across our land. Father, we pray tonight as well for our first responders and military personnel. God, we ask that you would be with them and watch over them in their service. And God, we thank you for the sacrifices that they, they so often make. 
And uh, Father, we do pray for our school teachers tonight, our students, as they've come to a Christmas break. God, we, we thank you for blessing them and getting them this far. Lord, there were so uh, so many times and so many questions about whether or not they would be able to have class and go to class. And Father, we, we thank you for bringing them to this point in the school year and Lord, for watching over them. And uh, we do pray that you would continue to bless and be with them. And we pray for the wisdom that's needed for decisions that will be made as they start back. And God, we just ask that you would continue to, to keep them safe, uh, be with them during this time of, of break. And Father, we pray uh, that you would be with those, especially who are going into homes and situations, uh, Lord, where, where they're not appreciated, where they're not cared for, where they're not loved, that you would watch over them and be with them. Uh, but Father, we do pray for them, God. And Lord, tonight we, uh, we want to pray also for uh, our mission opportunities. Lord, we pray for the Azirs and Azerbaijan. God, we are so thankful to, to know this country, uh, to know one who is from this country. And uh, we pray earnestly uh, that they would hear the good news of Jesus, that they would come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior. Father, we pray also for our mission partners here locally. God, bless them in the work of their hands. Supply all that they need. Use them, Lord, to do a great work for your kingdom and glory. And Father, we pray tonight, Lord, that you would be with our church planning partners. God, sustain them, uphold them. Father, use them, uh, Lord, in their communities, God, to let the light of Christ shine brightly. And Father, tonight, Lord, we pray for the lost. God, we pray earnestly for their salvation. God, we pray, Lord, that you would, uh, God, Lord, that you would help them to, to hear the gospel, bring a witness to their life, or help them to recall the gospel. And uh, Lord, as they think upon gospel things, as they think upon who Jesus is, and in this season, when there are so many gospel elements present, God, why he has come, Lord, that their hearts would be softened, and God, that they would realize their need uh, for a Savior, that they are a sinner, and they would call upon him in repentance and faith and be saved. Father, we pray, Lord, let us be faithful witnesses for you. Let us see many lives changed by the power of the gospel. And Father, tonight we pray, Lord, that as we look into your word in just a moment, God, we pray, Lord, that it would feed our souls, that it would encourage our faith, that we would grow strong, Lord, in Christ. And in that, we pray that you'd be glorified. Father, we ask all of these things tonight in the name that's above every other. We pray tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you've got a, a Bible there with you at home and uh, you want to follow along tonight, I want to encourage you to open it with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Of course, this is the very familiar Christmas passage in Luke's gospel. It really gives us the heart of the Christmas story. And uh, as I was thinking over these last several days, uh, being here at home and Kind of isolated from everything that's going on. Um, I, I just thought if there's ever been a Christmas season uh, where it perhaps doesn't feel like Christmas, uh, this is probably it. I know sometimes we make that statement or we hear that statement shared as we get to uh, the holidays. It just doesn't seem like Christmas. It just doesn't seem like it's Christmas time. And certainly this year that can be the case for her. Well, many reasons. Uh, it's obviously been a difficult year. It's been a different year. Uh, it, it's, it's just been unlike anything we would have expected or planned for. And now here we are as we get close to the Christmas day and uh, COVID cases are, are increasing and still on the rise. And many people are fighting this virus and there's all kinds of other things going on politically, economically, culturally, socially. And so it would be easy uh, to, to really hold on to that statement. It just doesn't seem like Christmas this year. Well, this evening, I just want to remind us that it is still Christmas. It is still Christmas. And uh, it may be a Christmas unlike any other that we've experienced. It may not be quite as festive or quite as bright, but it is still Christmas. And that has some huge implications for us. In Luke's gospel, reminds us of that. Tonight, I want us to look at Luke chapter 2, and uh, I want to read in verse 8, start with verse 8, and just uh, hear Luke tell us again the story of the first Christmas night as uh, the angels appear to the shepherds in their field. Listen to what the Bible says, Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. I can imagine 
what must have been going through the minds of those shepherds when they suddenly saw the angel of the Lord above them, the glory of the Lord shining around them. No doubt uh, they were filled with great fear. Uh, and, and sometimes uh, we find ourselves in very similar situations filled with great fear. And this year, perhaps that's something that you face. Uh, but as Luke continues on in retelling this account, uh, we hear that, that that's something we don't have to face. The Bible goes on and it says in verse 10, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. It may not feel like Christmas. It may not seem like Christmas, but it's still Christmas. And the angel uh, here in Luke 2, and the message that he shared is a message that we need to be reminded of because it's still Christmas. There are two important things here in the text that we need to, to keep in mind. First of all, because it's still Christmas, there's a gospel message. There's a gospel message. We see this in verse 10 as the angel speaks to the shepherds at night uh, where he said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy. You see, Christmas is really all about a message, a good news message. Uh, the word there that the angel says, good news, is, is really uh, our word for evangelism. Uh, that there's an angel with a message that is pronouncing this glorious uh, hope of salvation that has come. And that's still here. Nothing has changed that this year. Uh, there's still a gospel message uh, that can be proclaimed. The angel goes on to elaborate this good, this good news uh, of great joy, this gospel message in verse uh, verse 11, when the angel says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. You see, it's still Christmas, and there's still a gospel message. And that gospel message centers around the promises of God, that God has kept his word to his people, that what he promised hundreds, thousands of years ago in the Old Testament, now in Luke 2, is coming to pass coming to pass in the exact way that he said that it would, that there in the city of David, that's the city of Bethlehem, it was the hometown of, of David, that there in the city of David, uh, down to the precise detail and exact location, uh, a child was being born, but not just any child, uh, a savior, God in the flesh. He talks about the location. He gives us the place. He talks about the person, the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. That's the gospel message for us. And that gospel message says that we can have great joy, great joy. You know, when we talk about it, it doesn't seem like Christmas. We're really focusing in on our circumstances. We're really focusing in on what's happening around us. And, and certainly there's a lot that's going on. But when we look at our circumstances and we simply take note of, of what's taking place, uh, we can we can lose our joy. Uh, we can lose uh, the wonder of what the season is really all about. We can forget uh, the message that came with Christmas. But the angel here in Luke reminds us if we'll keep in mind that it's still Christmas and that the gospel message has come, we can have great joy. And you see, the difference between joy and happiness uh, is an important one. Happiness focuses in on what's going on in your circumstance, in your happenstance. And, and if circumstances are good, well, you can be happy. Circumstances aren't good, you're unhappy. Things aren't going well. Uh, but joy doesn't operate in that fashion. Uh, joy isn't based on your circumstances. Joy is based on something greater. And here it's based on the good news that in Bethlehem that night, a Savior was born. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. Well, as the angel shares with the shepherds that night that uh, a Savior was born. Uh, it's an important piece of information. Because as he describes his child being born as a Savior, not only is he telling us who he is, who Jesus is, 
but he's telling us who we are as well. Because Jesus is the Savior, that means that we are the sinners. And uh, boy, we, we we are in a mess. We, we've transgressed uh, God's laws. We've transgressed uh, against God. We've fallen short of his glory. Uh, we've missed the mark with him. Uh, we're under his judgment. We deserve his wrath. Uh, we're separated from him. We're uh, kicked out of his presence. Uh, we're in a mess. We're in a mess. But the gospel message of Christmas says a savior has come for sinners like us. That's what Paul declared uh, in in uh, the book of, of Timothy. Uh, he says, great is the mystery of godliness, uh, that Christ Jesus has come into the world to save sinners of whom he was foremost. Uh, a savior has come because we're sinners and that's exactly what sinners need. We need a savior. That's the, the gospel message of Christmas. That's the good news. And that good news brings us great joy. So it's still Christmas. And because it's still Christmas, we have this gospel message that brings us great joy, regardless of what's going on around us. Jesus Christ, the Lord, has been born. He's been born. And then there's a second thing I want you to see in the angel's words there in verse number 10. Not only the gospel message that Christmas brings, but the global mission that Christmas has as well. Listen again to what the angel said. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. It will be for all the people. I don't think it was by coincidence that the angels appeared to the shepherds that night. That the announcement of the arrival of God's son into the world came to that particular group of people. However, the angels shared with them that what they were hearing would be a message that would not only shape their lives, but a message that would shape everyone's life. The good news of Jesus being born, that a savior who is Christ the Lord was born in Bethlehem, uh, that brings great joy, was a message for all the people. And those shepherds really were the first Christmas evangelists. Uh, they were the first ones to go to share what they had heard, even as they went to the, the manger there in Bethlehem, and even as they told Mary and Joseph what the angels had proclaimed to them. And then as they left after seeing the child wrapped in swaddling cloths, going back to their fields, uh, they shared with everyone all that they had seen and all that they had heard that night. Why? Because Christmas is a message for all people. It's a, it's a, a global uh, message. It's a, it's a mission message. And because it's still Christmas, it means that we've got to do the work of getting that message out to others. We've got to do the work of, of making this Savior known. You know, there's a lot that we could talk about this season. My goodness, there's a lot that we could talk about. We could talk about how it doesn't feel like Christmas, how we've never seen a year like this before, uh, and on and on and on we could go and all different takes on, on what we could speak of regarding uh, the, the year that we've experienced. But let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about making him known. Let's talk about the good news and the great joy that he brings. You see, Christmas brings us a global mission. We're to let all people everywhere know that God's son has come into the world. So let's talk about that because that message brings hope that will change your life for all eternity. I realize we may not have all the feels this year. Uh, I realize we may not be able to enjoy some of the traditions that we often like to in this season. We may not be able to go to some of the places that we often uh, go to this year. But it's still Christmas. It's still Christmas. And because it's still Christmas, there's a gospel message that rings true. There was a child that was born, a savior for sinners like us. And because he has come into the world, he lived in this world, he died on the cross, shedding his blood, was buried, and on the third day rose again, we have a message to proclaim to everyone. And that message is simply believe in him. Turn from yourself and turn from your sin and turn to this Savior. Cast yourself upon him 
and be saved. Be reconciled to God. Know the peace of God and the great joy that Jesus can bring into your life. It's still Christmas. We still have a gospel message. We still have a global mission. So let's make the name of Jesus Christ known this year. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, so much has been so different this year. And uh, Lord, it's it's been unlike anything we could have expected, never would have expected. But yet, Lord, there's still so much that is true. Lord, it's Christmas and we celebrate it. Lord, not for uh, all the worldly reasons, but we celebrate it because of the ultimate reason that Christ Jesus came into the world. And Father, for that, we're so thankful. We're thankful for the good news, for the good news that that brings. Father, we're thankful that that good news brings great joy, that regardless of what may be happening around us, regardless of, of what we may be experiencing, uh, the cares, the uncertainties, God, regardless of, of the hurt and even the heartache, we can still have great joy because Jesus Christ has come. God is faithful, and uh, you were faithful to send your son, just as you said that you would. And he's a faithful savior to save all of those who would call upon him. And Father, in that, we rejoice tonight. And Father, we pray that you would help us to be faithful, faithful in getting that message out to everyone, to let them know there's still Christmas, there's still a message, there's still a mission, so, Father, let us be found faithful, Lord, even in this season. Father, let us make the name of Jesus Christ known, Lord, to everyone, everywhere. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. May your spirit take this word and apply it to our hearts, to our lives, to shape us and to the people that you would have us to be. Father, be with us as we go from this time tonight. Father, if we gather on Sundays, we gather on Sunday, Lord, may you be in our midst and may all that we do bring honor and glory to you. And Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you so much for tuning in this evening. And I want to remind you to make sure you check your email inbox if you're part of our faith family of our updated holiday schedule here as we come toward the end of the year. We will be meeting on campus this Sunday, two services. 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. So if you can, uh, if you're able and feel comfortable, come out and join us on campus and worship. Uh, if not, make sure you tune in online at 10.30 a.m. on one of our platforms and worship with us that way. Until then, may God bless you and may the Lord be with you.